Hey everybody, it's Party Elite, welcoming you to the last episode of Exxon that'll be releasing on this channel in 2022. Of course, we're gonna keep this series going right up until completion, folks. By hook or by crook, I am absolutely invested in this story and the gameplay as well. There's no way this series is going to end prematurely. Now, if you've been enjoying all these episodes in 2022 and you would like to see the series continue in 2023, please don't hesitate to keep letting me know by leaving those likes and comments down below. Folks, as always, they make a very big difference in letting me know what people are enjoying on the channel. And uh, not only do the number of likes and comments communicate that to me very quickly, but I do also read through all of the comments to get an idea of what people are enjoying, what uh, I could perhaps adjust, or uh, what you're interested in seeing as well. For example, I saw quite a few comments with regards to this gap in our roads over here driving a few of you mad and it was driving me mad too but there you go I, I I've, I've seen your comments and I figured why don't we go ahead and patch that up sooner rather than later we no longer need that measurement for where our docking bay is going to sit right so uh, we can take care of that but jokes aside and that minor thing aside I do take a look at all the comments folks whether you've uh, dropped them you know a day after release or months after a video has released they just inform me with regards to my approach and how I can like I said make adjustments so that people are having a wonderful time as we continue to explore the rather dark story of uh, of Ixion. Now, on the topic of uh, things to explore, we should also explore the tech tree once more because I just want to point out, folks, after we are done getting these smart homes upgrades to boost our uh, housing capacity by 60%, I'm sure that doesn't, by the way, compound on top of the 30%. I'm sure it's just 60% uh, from the base number, not on top of the extra 30% we're getting from additional beds. But once we're done with uh, with that research, which shouldn't be too far away, depending on how quickly the tech lab actually accumulates science, we're going to, well, help the tech lab accumulate science a bit more quickly. I cannot believe I got distracted from the priorities we set a couple of sessions ago just because we unlocked this outer ring, but hey, that happens from time to time. We're going to, folks, focus on the intelligent lab upgrade, getting us the uh, production rate of science up to five units every five cycles, and then we're going to have to chase after personal computer, PA-assisted management, family at work, and high-risk experimentation field, all just to unlock computing optimization, which will get us the uh, science production rate up to five units every three cycles. So that's a lot of uh, time and science invested, but if we're not producing science quickly enough, we're falling behind. And so our top priority should definitely be the tech lab, though I will say I have no regrets about focusing on our crew quarters first, because we're currently in a situation where we're going to need those crew quarters to be at their, you know, most optimized sooner rather than later because again just as a reminder we have a bunch of chronic pods headed over for the time being in sector one we have apparently that no, there we go a hundred uh, keep forgetting you can't click here to actually switch to the sector but not only do we already have about a hundred chronic pods in the stockpile we actually have uh, quite a few 127 to be precise, awaiting uh, in the docking bay and beyond that as well, we have another 533 waiting to be picked up. So having more housing capacity was definitely urgent, even more so yes than upgrading our tech lab. But with that out of the way, we can focus on the tech lab and then start talking about some of the other options we were talking about previously. Separately as well, I'm going to go ahead and get the cataphract uh, assigning iron as a second priority so that as soon as it's done bringing in silicon, it'll go ahead and shift gears to uh, iron and it'll have to micromanage as much and we'll just have that much more to actually collect and bring back. Separately as well, there are a couple things I was wondering with regards to our uh, docking bay over here in sector three. Some of you were pointing out that it's kind of sitting here idle and not doing anything. You're absolutely right. So why don't we go ahead and yes, build up a few uh, cargo ships over here and have them bringing in some resources as well because folks, we are not out of the weeds just quite yet. Yes, alloys are looking quite good and yes, polymer is looking all right as well. But do not forget that we are still trying to help the Protagoras. We still have to supply it with a lot of goods and we still have much more of the game to go. Who knows how much worse our circumstances are going to get, right? But we can't just build cargo ships here and be done with it. We actually need somewhere for them to offload said cargo, we'll need to build some additional stockpiles. And though, yes, I want to build two EVA airlocks up there, and I was planning on building two down over here, I think we'll have to sacrifice some of the space on one of these sides to build a couple of stockpiles to help uh, store iron before it gets shipped out. The other option is to uh, store something else down there that's a bit more suited. I just don't know what all, all these resources are as close to where they're needed as uh, makes sense. I suppose rather than iron up over here, we could have, uh, sorry, rather than alloys up over here, we could stockpile iron 
and then alloys can be stockpiled elsewhere because they're needed for construction. It could be in a more central location, I suppose. Yeah, sure, that makes sense. Why don't we go ahead and actually uh, renege on what I literally just said and build a stockpile up over here instead, uh, leaving room for a bit more housing over here. But uh, hmm, roads could actually come up like this. Yeah, you know, you know what? This actually isn't terrible, I say with great hesitation because it actually is kind of terrible. We won't be... It, it, it eats up space where I would rather not see space eaten up. And it gets rid of the very clean organization that we've had for so long. But uh, look, we'll call it a temporary solution that'll probably become permanent eventually. But let's get that solution going for the time being. And you know what? That means that we can keep this uh, stockpiling alloys and we'll have this stockpiling iron. It's uh, close enough. Oh, actually, you know what? No, we'll stick with this having alloys because then for all construction that's happening over here, it's a shorter distance. And then yes, this can switch on over to uh, iron. Uh, it'll take a little bit longer for our workers to bring alloys to this spot but it's whatever it's fine i'm like nitpicking at this point in time and being too uh too careful too precise we're gonna go ahead and shut down the colonization training center over here by the way we no longer need it active though with that said i do think i'm going to go ahead and bring some more non-workers from sector one into sector three we have room for them yes and sector one is currently hosting 273 non-workers who are doing absolutely nothing so from uh, sector one to sector three, we'll ship over not all 273 of them right away. Obviously, we don't have that much housing in sector three, but we'll ship over what? Let's say uh, maybe 60 or so. Just something just to give some like wiggle room, I suppose, for sector one as they awaken all those chronic pods. Right. I want to make sure we don't have a housing crisis uh, suddenly pop up in, in sector one because of our nonchalance with population management. So, yeah, 60 non-workers from sector one to sector three. We're not going to convert them to colonists just quite yet, though. Actually, now that I say that, I wonder if it's probably a good idea uh, to do that. All right. Let's send these 60 over and let's also send how many workers can we send over? We have 284 out of the 210 that we need. I want to send some, I think, to sector two as well, though, because in sector two, I would like to activate our uh, polymer refinery because polymers are also needed by the Protagoras, right? So why don't we go ahead and uh, why don't we go ahead and do that? Yeah, sure. If I turn you on, I'll need 15 more workers. What do we have over here right now? 195, 217 are available. If I turn you on without having more workers, we're still going to see optimal working conditions. So maybe we don't need to ship any over to here. But if I do keep you on, we're still doing fine. Once the stockpile is up and running, that's another five. We'll still be fine. Okay, sure. So I don't actually need to move workers over just quite yet. So we're fine. Okay, cool. We're fine as we are. Uh, apart from the potential crisis in Sector 1 as far as population is concerned, this homelessness is not actually a concern. We are completing these demotic quarters, and uh, and once they're actually built up, we'll have more than enough room for uh, all the people living in Sector 1. Okay, that's all the interior management done. That's all the uh, work assignment that I needed to get done out of the way. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the Protagoras. Many of you raised a very good point with regards to our conversation with the elders, or our potential conversation with the elders, I should say, and uh, you've convinced me that, yes, we should, in fact, meet the elders. We are, after all, curious about what happened. We are, after all, looking for answers. Who was responsible? What is uh, in our future? What lies ahead? Uh, what do these elders know that we don't, right? They made it further than us, sooner than us, and they suffered some great tragedies. So if we can know and if we can learn from them, then we absolutely should. Now, I want to be absolutely clear. I, from a meta conversation, am extremely concerned about this option. I think things are going to go horribly wrong by meeting the elders. But in character and also out of just sheer curiosity, I do think we should meet the elders and try and learn what happened. After all, the challenges that the game throws our way, as many of you brought up, the challenges that the game throws our way as a result of these story beats and stuff, well, that's half the fun, if not three quarters of the fun if not all the fun. So sure, let's go ahead and meet the elders. It'll take three cycles for that to actually happen. And I'll be honest with you, I'm very concerned about the consequences of that meeting. But hey, hopefully things will be just fine. 
it's not the end of the world no matter what happens now apart from that though i do want to send an additional probe into the ice fields over here because we are going to have to actually go up to the protagoras and uh even though yes there's a lot of resources to pick up over here and even though we have yes found a bunch of resources in the ice fields already i would like to perhaps uh see if there's another sweet spot somewhere that'll be easier for us to mine once we're actually in there because do not forget that uh Again, we have we, we owe the Protagoras a lot of resources, and uh, oh, hello, wow! I had a feeling there was something something here. We had so many like small bumps and and, and spikes. I was like, there's got to be a sweet spot here somewhere, and, and and there was one. And now I've lost it, but I'll find it again shortly. Uh, but yes, as I was saying, we we do owe the uh, Protagoras a lot of resources, and so we want to make sure that when we leave this system, we are able to leave it uh, as soon as our work with the Protagoras is done, and we're not leaving it with uh, you know empty empty stockpiles so hopefully when we are up over here when we're helping the protagoras with their superstructure and the rebooting of their core systems um i want to make sure we're mining as quickly and efficiently as possible so that we're able to yes stockpile our resources and leave not just the system as a whole but also the ice field as quickly as possible spending time in the ice field is going to cause us trouble and taking a look at the uh, tech tree i don't think the hull upgrades have anything that have to do with uh, with ice uh, we can take a look at our solar panels as well because they are exposed we can reduce the cost of their production we can increase uh, the quantity of production as well but there's nothing we can do oh destruction chance during dangerous weather conditions is reduced by 50 percent okay okay adjustable panel orientation is needed before we can do that all right, here's what we're going to do. We're going to wait until we have collected all of the cryonic pods before we even head into the ice field. That way, we've secured everything we wanted to secure uh, for departure before going into a dangerous, uh, you know, bit of space. And uh, and then hopefully, as soon as we're done with the Protagoras, we can we can we can get out of here, right? Without having to wait in the ice field, without having to move through it again uh, and potentially damage ourselves while while moving. Who, who knows what can happen? Uh, but I think that'll be the right call. So we'll we'll we'll, we'll hang out out over here for just a little bit longer as we uh, wait for all those yes chronic pods to come through and as we uh, as we prepare to escape uh, as soon as we're done with the uh, Protagoras. We are also, by the way, repatriating the uh, colonists on the V-59. It's taking some time, but uh, it'll be done soon enough, hopefully, and separately again, if we head back on into the uh, Tycoon uh, down over here, as soon as the stockpile is done, and as soon as uh, these uh, cargo ships are done as well, we're going to have them bringing in more iron to make sure we are able to uh, further improve the flow of alloy production. I would like to see these stockpiles as close to maxed out as possible by the time we engage with the Protagoras, just so that even though they are going to drain quite a few of our resources, A, we have those resources to be drained on hand right away, as opposed to having to wait for them to be produced, and B, if there is an emergency and we have to very quickly build something while our stockpiles are being drained because of the Protagoras, we have those surplus resources to, uh, to, 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 to do that emergency construction. Put your own mask on first, right? Like when you're on an airplane and things are going sideways and the masks drop, you're supposed to put your own mask on first and then you help anybody around you who needs help. And, and so we have to make sure we have these stockpiles built up so that we're able to then help, yes, the Protagoras. They've been fine for so long, they'll be fine for a little while longer as up over here. The uh, Aldana is almost done. It'll be the Pelican next and we'll, yeah, we'll get them shipping goods immediately. Let's speed time up because things are looking pretty good overall feeling quite comfortable about our current circumstances truth be told we are currently doing what else we are bringing in some additional ice which yes i perhaps waited a little bit too long to uh to do last session but uh we're, we're on the way to, to fixing that right now the aldana has been completed let's get it pulling in iron and uh, separately as well we have moved 60 non-workers from sector one to sector three sector three is still looking okay as far as homelessness and stuff but food is a bit of a concern over here we need a bit more food why don't we go ahead and deal with resource management from sector one where we have 98 food uh, to sector three where we'll want to chase after let's say 25 or even 30 yeah let's do 30 that's a nice safe uh, surplus there and uh i guess i could keep training colonists we have now uh, we don't have silicon or uh electronics not that much and right, we have a we have a little bit here and there it's a balancing act, right? Because I'm sure down the line, we're going to need a bunch of colonists, and I don't want to be in a position where I am like, oh, dang, I wish I'd trained all those colonists. Now we're stuck in a very precarious position and situation without having the colonists on hand, and we have to train a bunch of them all at the same time. We have some of the resources in place, so why don't we work on this short? Let's go ahead and train 15 colonists. 
And why don't we go ahead and uh, take a look at reactivating our electronics factory here as well. Working conditions here are optimal. We have not got enough workers to uh, maintain optimal conditions once the electronics factory is turned on. We need additional 30 workers here, so why don't we head on over to population management. And from sector one to sector two, we will send uh, 30 workers only. And that should hopefully keep us covered. We have enough housing, so that's all well and good. We also have 10 non-workers. How did that happen? I'm not 100% sure, but we can shift uh, them over. So from uh, only non-workers from sector two to sector three, we'll ship 10 over and uh, make some more room for workers start that migration and uh, yeah keep training them as well and then we can also yes consider chasing after silicon we could get uh, quicksilver perhaps assigned to that as the primary concern and then polymers or rather i should say carbon as a secondary and we'll get rid of iron from you because pandora zotti and uh, aldana are chasing after iron and we're soon going to have an additional cargo ship focusing on iron as well i think that works out nicely enough hopefully i'm not wrong in my assessment and in just a moment's time, we'll be able to uh, chase after, yes, Tech Lab upgrades, as was our plan for some time now. Separately as well, I do wonder if we want to build more solar panels, driven entirely by the discovery of uh, this upgrade over here, where to go. Destruction chance during dangerous weather conditions is reduced by 50%. That means being in dangerous weather conditions, you know, it puts a chance of, 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 of damage to these uh, solar panels, which is a disconcerting thought. So having extra solar panels gives us some wiggle room in terms of some of them being destroyed, right? So external construction, let's head on over to our uh, large solar panel six. My goodness, 225 polymers. Are you kidding me? What about our second set? Okay, 75 polymers and three electronics. That's still a lot. That's still a huge investment, but a necessary one, I think. Geez, I'm almost wondering if that upgrade that reduces the cost of construction would have been a nice thing to have on hand right now. But uh, hey, too late for at least all of our work so far. Maybe some of our future work to come will uh, will take advantage of that tech. As separately, we're going to go ahead and see exactly what uh, the elders have to say. Wow. The first thing I see is uh, Jograj, Zara, and Manishankar Mani have been lost. My goodness. I knew this was going to be trouble. The elders, as they call themselves, have told us their story. They are among some of the last members of the crew to remember Earth. Many in the Protagoras do not remember their pasts. The elders blame Dolos cryonic technology for this phenomenon. They testified to a significant difference between the crew of the Protagoras and that of the Etamananki. The crew of the Etamananki was mainly composed of people who had lived on Earth almost all their lives. According to the elders, Vol technology is more than just space travel technology. They believe each vol jump by a Dulles vessel generates cataclysm equivalent to that initially caused by the tycoon. Krauss tachyons, they say, are the root cause of this, and the fact that UN self-similar space travel technology does not utilize these particles means their ships do not leave behind such cataclysm. The discussion lasts for some time. Jograj, Zara, and Manishankar Mani have decided to stay on the Protagoras with the Elders. They do not want to follow the tycoon's mission anymore. I mean, I don't really blame them. To be told you are responsible for the destruction of the moon and the end of humanity and civilization as we know it, I mean, geez, that's disheartening. And to know that every time you jump, you will leave behind similar like levels of destruction, yeah, disheartening. That's definitely one word for it. Now, granted, you know, this system, there aren't that many people who would suffer should such a cataclysm happen, but it's still leaving behind a literal wake of destruction. My goodness, we are the bad guys, aren't we? Why did the UN figure out, it's again, first to market, tech billionaires, man. <laughs> I've been saying this since like session one, session two, tech billionaires, man, anything to get ahead, anything for a dollar. This is, I mean, again, this just means that, yeah, if, if we'd maybe waited a little bit longer, if we'd, uh, explored how to do uh, these jumps without using Frauss tachyons like the UN, uh, we would have been, uh, well, not responsible for the destruction of uh, everything we held dear. I still think, to a degree, it was intentional. I still think part of the plan was, well, if, if there is no Earth to go back to, then we'd have to venture forth. It, it's, it's a motivator. It's like, uh, you know, when, uh, when, the, when the Spanish came to uh, the Americas, right, and they burnt all the ships, what was it, right? It was it was a Spanish, right? Uh, the story uh, has to do with, I'm trying to remember, I'm racking my brains. Um, but, uh, but by burning down all the ships, it's like, well, cool, we don't have an option now. We can't go home. There is no more way to go home. We're here now. 
and we must be fully dedicated to the mission. And that's exactly what's happened over here with the tycoon. Damn, man. Well, this is still an option, yes, to repair the Protagoras superstructure and reboot its core systems. Again, yes, it will still take 100 alloys and uh, 60 polymers, which uh, we desperately need to produce before we head on into the ice field to help these guys out. We're, we're, we're on the right track over here. The Calypso, however, is now missing to crew, so we're going to have you return to the Tycoon to pick them up. Uh, it's currently investigating an event. Oh, are you really not able to... Ah, interesting. Well, that's fine. As long as we're allowed to repair the Protagoras while being short some crew, that's not a problem. I'm just a little worried that it won't allow us to do that, but I, I'm, I'm sure it's fine. I'm sure, I'm sure that's not an issue. Yeah, I'm, we'll be fine. We'll be fine. Anyway, back on the Tycoon, or back in the Tycoon. Uh, things are looking okay. We are collecting iron now. We are nowhere near being able to build the Pelican because we are actually very low on polymers. My goodness. Now, this thing is up and running now. However, it's fairly slow. Five carbon turns into five uh, polymer per cycle. That's not very quick, so uh, it, it'll take some time for all this to get sorted. While over here, we were seeing a little bit of a uh, food issue, but it doesn't seem to actually be a concern. It was just flickering on and off. Is that because we have exactly as much food as we need in Sector 2? Uh, that's fine. We, 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 that's not actually true. We have 21 in stockpile and 26 ready to feed this meal cycle. So we are fine as over here. There's been an accident in sector one. Everyone's seeing optimal working conditions. Yes, everyone is seeing optimal working conditions. We do not have to make any adjustments. One thing I was actually wondering is if I wanted to activate our uh, supported working hours policy. Right now is probably a little premature to do that. But when we see, uh, you know, that we have more workers than we actually... Uh, need at any given time we might flip the switch on that and separately on the topic of flipping uh switches uh many of you were suggesting that in sector one we get workers first going that negative three disability is absolutely huge and truth be told we're not in a rush for workers as we once were so i'm okay with things proceeding as they're proceeding right now i think we'll be just fine as over here we're going to go ahead and activate our electronics factory no we're not not until the uh solar panels here have been completed my goodness I'm glad I checked that. 30 power is, well, we, we don't have 30 power. So we're going to not make that decision right now. Smart homes have been unlocked. Let's go ahead and then research our tech lab upgrades over here. Intelligent lab comes first, producing five science every five cycles, uh, which is an upgrade from three science every five cycles. So uh, don't mind if I do. It should take 2.8 cycles. But of course, we're not generating science quickly enough to, to actually meet that uh, deadline. So it'll take a long time for us to actually get... Uh, that upgrade in place. Bit of a shame. Maybe I should have focused on that before we got the smart homes, but hey, we have the smart homes now, and that means these uh, optimized quarters can house 64 people, while the demotic quarters can house 112. Right. Okay. No regrets. No regrets. Let's keep time sped up. I, I wonder if we can't go even a little bit faster, and I wonder if here we shouldn't shut down our probe launcher so that it's not draining polymers and it's not being prioritized. We've done enough scouting for the time being. We'll re-engage them eventually. Uh, up over here, though, that does give us enough power then to activate the electronics factory unless something goes wrong and we find ourselves in a ton of trouble because we only have five power as uh, the wiggle room. That's not good enough. Let's just wait for the solar panel to be completed over here. It's not going to take that much longer. And then we'll be able to, uh, yes, uh, activate our electronics factory uh, as we are looking pretty good as far as alloys are concerned. And separately, what's the deal here? Right, right. Of course, the deal here is that we don't have enough polymers to build this cargo ship. My goodness. It's okay. Look, I'm, I'm not concerned. I'm not concerned. We're doing just fine. We're doing just fine. Everything is going smoothly, apart from, yes, the literal wake of destruction we leave behind. This negative 64 to hull integrity is because we're currently building up our solar panel. We'll get to about 50% integrity, I think, and, and then we'll be fine. So I don't have to worry about stability or anything like that. Uh, and in fact, we're, uh, we're able to maybe stockpile some more alloys while we're not doing the repairs. So silver lining for everything as more ice is coming through as well. And what's the situation as far as our uh, chronic pods are concerned? We're looking okay. I wonder... Nah, we should still draw in more ice. I was, I was just wondering about getting the uh, whale to chase after chronic pods as well. But nah, ice is looking kind of tight, so we'll, we'll, we'll stick with this for the time being. And it looks as though we're running out of iron to actually mine. Once that happens, we still have plenty to bring in, but that's not good enough. Hmm, you know, that's just not... That's not good enough. So I might actually want to... Uh, 
once this cargo ship is done, we'll get this probe launcher up and running. But separately, we should probably tell these guys to make uh, carbon like a second or third priority. Just so they're doing something, so they're not sitting idle, right? Because that's a waste of everybody's time. That's a waste of everybody's time. But yes, iron is almost completely depleted from the uh, locations we've already scouted, at least. So we'll, we'll probably try and seek out some more. Yes, we have a thousand iron waiting to be picked up, but I'm not convinced that's enough for all the work that needs doing, right? Like, I'm also not convinced that we have access to enough uh, polymers or, or carbon to turn into polymers. That's a lie. Okay, now, 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 now that I've seen the number, okay, I'm a bit more comfortable because that's about 460 um, polymers, 60 of which goes to the Protagoras. The rest stays with us. So yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll be okay as long as Quicksilver over here actually goes and picks up some of the carbon. It is prioritizing silicon, which we can perhaps stop doing now or, or make it a lower priority. And that way carbon becomes prioritized and we can actually build... Um, an additional cargo ship to help with research, uh, resource acquisition. Sorry, fumbling over my words there a little bit as we activate the electronics factory, use some of that uh, silicon and uh, some of that extra power we're generating now as well. Things should be a-okay. Speed time up a bit further, why not? I do wonder, I do wonder about waste management in, uh, in Sector 3 just to prevent these pauses in uh, in tech generation, right? Because if I'm not mistaken, we'd be able to uh, keep things going, though it'll give us a hit to stability, right? I believe it's just a negative one. If we start recycling waste, it is a negative one. That's all it is. I don't know. I, I don't think it's worth it necessarily, but it is uh, something I'm, I'm wondering about out loud. Crew members injured in Sector 3 because of the stockpile. We're still doing okay, though. Yeah, doing all right across a lot of our uh, resources too. Sector 2 sees an accident as well. Working conditions are still optimal, so everyone's still doing all right. And uh, if we take a look at our fleet management once more, just want to keep an eye on that chronic pod situation and the, uh, the, the, the colonist situation as well. I do wonder if uh, maybe we should do this. Just to get those colonists here sooner rather than later, they are currently abandoned uh, you know, on a distant planet. It would be nice to get them home. Well, if we can call this home. Yeah, of course we can call this home. This is home. It's been home for almost 700 cycles now. So uh, let's get them back home and uh, and get them like, you know, a, a warm drink and, and, and hot food and, and just some just some creature comforts, right? Overall, though, things are all right. Six crew members injured in sector one. As I say that, obviously, we get a heads up of an injury. Uh, it's just this insect farm. Food is looking good. Food is looking perfect. Yeah. We have more than enough food, but do we have more than enough food to feed another, you know, 400 people? More than 400, actually. We've got 100 there, 150 here. Oh my goodness, like 700 people, give or take, obviously. 50 or, or, or so. We might need more food, and, and, and to that end, of course, yes, we will be building, I think, the mushroom wall over here uh, and, and uh, acquiring waste from our fusion station to uh, keep it running. I do believe... The fusion station is the only thing here that produces waste, which is a bit of a bummer because our industrial sector over here is just constantly producing so much waste. But the thing is, if we want to actually stockpile waste, we need to activate the, uh, the, the, the waste recycling uh, policy. And if we want to use waste, the place where we're using waste needs to have a waste stockpile as well. So the option here is to uh, either Yes, accumulate waste slowly from one building that produces it, uh, but only have that policy active in Sector 1, where we'll both accumulate the waste and process it into food, or have it act, uh, uh, activated sorry, across two sectors so that we're producing waste over here, but we're also able to store it over here so that we're able to turn it into food. Bit of a juggling act. Uh, we'll make those decisions as the pressure gets applied, I think, because for the time being, I think we're still okay. Hopefully I don't regret those words within like the next 20 cycles or so but let's get those cycles moving shall we things are looking all right for the time being yes a couple of injuries here and there but no one's dying our uh, total loss is still just at 14 so it's 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 not that bad i would have loved for this number to stay at zero but that feels almost impossible for a first run where you're still exploring some of the options out there having your science ships get wiped out or uh, you know, just not uh, being able to keep up with uh, with some of the initial troubles, especially. I feel like the challenge 
well, I don't I don't want to I don't want to bait the universe over here. Look, I'm sure this game is about to get a lot harder when we jump from this system to the next one, right? Uh, some things were still somewhat tutorialized in this sector. We were introduced to policies, for example, we were introduced, I think, to population management in this sector, or was that the previous sector? I forget now. But my point being, I feel like the uh, kid gloves are still kind of on. Like there's one kid glove still on, and I'm pretty sure the next sector or the next yeah sector is going to be uh, that much more brutal. So uh, I, I don't want to start resting on my laurels or, or start to say, oh, this has become way too easy. It's been a little soft on us for the last little while, but uh, I'm ready for it to, uh, to, to, to start causing us trouble, you know, relatively soon, let's call it. Are we able to train more colonists over here? I think so. We got some electronics. Let's keep it up. And let's actually take a look at our population in Sector 3. Right now we have 48 colonists plus... Where are the colonists in Sector 1 we were bringing in? If we take a look at fleet management, maybe they're still being carried back. Let's get the Pelican over here chasing after Iron, yes. And let's go ahead and take a look at the planetary system map. And let's seek out our uh, whale, was it? Who was it that was bringing? Or, or Koala, I suppose, might be carrying them. Koala, where are you at? That's not you. Well, no, not you. Come on, come on. Let me highlight you. That's... Nope. Whale. Koala. Oh, yeah. So, Koala is currently carrying 27 colonists. Uh, so, we have 27 plus on top of that 27. We have... This is not the right way to go about it. Let's go about it this way. 27 plus 48. That is 60... 75, right? Yeah. Let's go ahead and, and get a few more going. There's, there's no reason not to. Again, like I'm pretty sure I, I mentioned a few moments ago... I'm sure eventually we're going to come across a place which is like, you need 150 colonists, and I don't want to be in a position where we're like, dang, I really wish I had those 150 colonists, because I sure have everything I needed to train them, but I just chose not to for no good reason. It's better to stay ahead of things like this, right? As Silicon is once more um, missing. So let's turn the electronics factory off, and let's take a look at fleet management once more, and let's see if we can't maybe prioritize uh, the Pandora to chase after Silicon. We'll get uh, Quicksilver over here chasing just after Carbon. And we'll go ahead and let uh, Zoti, Aldana, and the Pelican chase after Iron. Again, Sector 3 only has stockpiles for Iron. I don't want to change that if I don't have to. So we'll leave it as is for the time being, as both of our mining ships are now completely idle. Let's go ahead and get them chasing after um, Ice. And hopefully we can seek out additional places to mine Iron from. Are we really not able to mine anything anymore? There's ice over here, everything, yeah, everything's been mined, eh? Okay, fair enough, fair enough. Uh, our probe is not yet ready to go because our probe launcher is uh, off. So why don't we turn it on and use some of these uh, polymers to build an additional probe. And then we can at least see what's out there to keep our mining ships busy, right? Because even if we don't urgently need iron or alloys or whatever it might be, it's good to have a, a surplus because you never know when you do need it. You never know when you do need it. Let's also, of course, yes, be careful about wasting polymers on building probe after probe after probe, because we do, yes, of course, want to make sure that uh, we are, uh, you know, s saving a, a stockpile for the Protagoras and for emergencies uh, at home as well. Overall, though, things are okay. 40% done with the next technology, which is promising. Do we really not have enough iron right now? No, that's not true. Is it taking some time to ship it over, or was it because uh, we have too much, uh, too, too many alloys? Not sure what was preventing the movement of goods there, or the movement of goods down over here. Well, okay, this is definitely because of a lack of iron, but that's uh, looking to be solved shortly, I imagine, because we got plenty of it in the stockpiles. It's just taking some time to ship it down. Uh, oh, no, storage is full, so no more resources can be produced. So it's just because there's too many alloys here, actually. Okay, fair enough. I mean, I guess we could uh, change our distribution of alloys and resource management. Sector 1, let's have you chasing after, let's say... Um, sure 50 alloys and sector 3 let's have you chasing after let's say 50 alloys as well because then what happens is that the alloys get emptied out from over here and then these guys can actually get emptied out as well have those alloys shifted up over here and they can keep producing more uh, again the whole station needs to have a surplus um, there's no point in, in having these guys topped up and then having no room to keep production going. It just doesn't make any sense to do it that way, obviously. So hopefully that'll help out as over here, our probe is done. So why don't we go ahead and uh, launch said probe to hopefully find another spot to mine. Ideally, it'll have a little bit of everything. It'll keep us busy for that much longer. But uh, I don't know I don't know what the chances are of actually getting that. Got a lot of ice over here. I would like, uh, I would like to secure silicon and carbon primarily, I think. Anything nearby here? Nothing, eh? Hmm, okay, okay. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, chase up over here then. 
send you over and uh sure we'll build another probe and and we'll send it out shortly as well speed time up everything's looking okay nine crew members injured in the alternative life center in sector three this is where i get nervous because that reduces our stability a little bit fortunately we still have an extra like plus one as a surplus but uh, it worries me when when something like that goes down and then all of a sudden people are unhappy and more accidents happen and, and and more injuries happen and more deaths happen that stuff gets me extremely nervous but we can turn this electronics factory back on because we have enough silicon now yeah good stuff we are working everything's operational everything's going pretty smoothly this is good stuff folks this is good stuff famous last words i know just wonder if it's time to uh concern myself with that mushroom wall over here what is what is the stability situation just the plus one eh just the plus one i could of course change our policy over here to uh intensify propaganda we really we already have it going yeah i guess we did that across the board at the same time damn okay so we have a plus one with intense propaganda i could switch to generous food rations to increase stability i could switch to uh what supported working hours just trying to figure out how we can improve stability to make room uh, for waste recycling without having to uh, build another monument or, or anything like that just trying to figure that out and actually on the topic of uh, improving stability it, it made me think about improving our alternative life center which reminded me something else i should check in our in our tech tree and that has to do with upgrading our steel mill are we able to, yes, produce more alloy per iron? We're able to produce a lot more alloy per iron. We're able to reduce power consumption by quite a bit, actually, with both of these upgrades, but we're not actually able to produce alloys faster, technically speaking. The, 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 the time consumption stays the same, even if the iron consumption gets reduced. So these aren't useless, don't get me wrong. They are, they are useful, but they're not going to speed up our work. They're just going to uh, optimize our uh, our ratio of of input to output right it'll improve our throughput but that's about it just want to point that out but the alternative life center which is up over here uh can get the dolos survivor families it provides an additional plus one stability to a sector while it has more than 400 crew which does apply to our uh, sector one right it's got it's got massive crew there over 700 now It'll take so long for us to actually research that. 35 science, right? If we're producing five science every five cycles, that means we need seven cycles, right? Because seven times five is 35. We'd need seven cycles to research Dolos survivor families. And I just wonder if we should switch to prioritizing this. Might not be a terrible idea, truth be told. And then flip back to our tech lab to chase after, um, you know, everything else and then get computing optimization that's so, so, so far away. So we'll temporarily switch gears, I think. I do want to point out, though, by the way, personal computer, PA assisted management, family at work, and uh, high-risk experimentation field. I can't recall if I mentioned this already, so I apologize if I'm repeating myself, but it increases research speed. I think that just means how quickly it'll turn science into progress. Like, I, I think it's not going to change how much science it actually costs uh, to unlock a piece of technology. I could be wrong, and if you know better, feel free to correct me in the comments, but I feel like all it does is it, it makes this bar fill up faster. It'll still cost, you know, 35 or however much science. It'll just take fewer cycles to actually uh, use the science, not to generate the science. Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, I mean to say that science generation will stay at the same rate of, you know, three every five cycles or five every five cycles or five every three cycles uh, but then it'll just get consumed faster so don't really know obviously it has a benefit but i don't know if it has a benefit for us just quite yet so i think our temporary distraction focusing on improving alternative life centers especially for sector one makes sense and then we can focus on uh yeah getting those mushroom walls up and running and uh, securing food for all the new cryonic pods that are being woken up right now our current average production covers 97.1 percent of meal requirements i feel like there's a bit of wiggle room there i feel like we're doing 
better than uh, what's being implied over there. And temporarily, yes, we can build more insect farms and we'll be just fine. But uh, long term thinking is uh, is the name of the game with these things, right? So I would like to get the mushroom wall up and running. And I don't know if we can fit a stockpile here as well, but we can always put a stockpile down over here. It's close to where waste gets generated. And separately, again, as I mentioned before, we could maybe consider stockpiling waste over here from all of these uh, industrial goods. Uh, though that'll mean we'll want over 400 people in Sector 2 as well to take advantage of that boost to the Alternative Life Center. Though, here, of course, we do have the option of building the... Uh, where to go? Where are our monuments? The uh, Marduk Memorial, which will give us plus one uh, stability in the sector, and an additional plus one if we unlock specific technology, and then plus one on top of that even more if we improve our, uh, our, our, our tier specialization over here, right? So there's options for Sector 2. Sector 1 is a bit tight on space, unless we want to demolish these insect farms to build a, a, a monument, which uh, is, of course, an option, right? That, that, that is an option, though not one I want to rush to. We're, we're fine. We're not under pressure right now. The homelessness is on the rise, so why don't we go ahead and dismantle some of these before it becomes a bigger problem and replace them with the larger housing options, right? So let's go ahead and get rid of you and you, sure, get those alloys and swap them out with the uh, Demotic Quarters uh, ASAP. I think it's the right call. They, they house 112 versus 64, right? It's almost twice as many, which is uh, not bad. Not bad at all. How much power do they take? Two versus two. They take the same amount of power as well. My goodness. I'm glad we uh, focused on housing uh, before we focused on much else. I, I think it was the right call for sure. Not just uh, last session, but uh, sessions prior as well. You know, getting to the optimized quarters sooner rather than later, I think, uh, helped us a lot and allowed us to stay a lot more organized as we now uh, use up some of our electronics. Do we have enough silicon to justify keeping this thing on? We do for the time being. What's the situation over here? Still looking okay. Yeah, sounds good. We can go ahead and turn this off. We no longer need it. Make you number one priority. Get those cryonic pods coming through. Ice is looking a little tight still, but the whale is bringing that ice in. And separately, what happened to our probe? Has it not reached its destination yet? We're already done mining it? My goodness. Are you for real? Sure, let's mine... Mine a bit of everything, I suppose. Prioritize iron. That's always top priority. And let's launch our next probe. Yikes, a little... A little surprised, actually. Go over here. There's a lot of carbon to be had over here, at least. Just to keep just to keep people busy, really. Ooh, come on, that looked good. Why is it not like bright green? Why is it like that faded gray green, you know? I don't get that. Where'd it go? There. Yeah, never never really gets uh, super bright, eh? Alright, let's go. Come on, where'd you go? Where'd you go? Somewhere nearby here. <laughs> I'll find it eventually. Or do I not care? Because it says resource estimate is high. Sure, I'll take, I'll take this. Fair enough, let's go. And uh, we'll, yeah, send more probes out as well, I suppose. I mean, uh, again, we've emptied these fields, which is good to see. We're focusing on these fields next. We should maybe prioritize this one instead, because then uh, when we're up over here in these ice fields, the remaining fields to collect from are closer to us rather than, you know, traveling to some distant locations to pick stuff up. We should perhaps also consider prioritizing some of these so that uh, everything's been taken care of that's far away. Uh, rather than eventually needing to rely on those. I mean, there's a lot of resources here, though, so I don't know what I'm so concerned about. We're doing fine. We're doing fine. Uh, homelessness in Sector 1 is an issue only because these guys have not been built up. We do not have electronics over here. Are we bringing electronics here? We are not. Sector 1, you need to store, let's say, four electronics. Uh, Sector 2 has four. Sector 3 has six. Um, or is, is trying to have six, I should say. Let's get this down to uh, four just so we're able to bring some over to Sector 1. And Sector 2 is exporting to Sector 1, though with a lower priority. Nope, it's the same priority across the board, so we should be okay. But uh, we got to get those electronics here sooner rather than later, because otherwise we are going to see that homelessness uh, continue to be a problem. Four electronics over here, right? Wait, let me just check something over here. Sector 2, you're trying to maintain four. Let's get you down to two. Cool. That'll do, uh, that'll do the job. That'll do the job. Cool. Cool, 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 cool. And, uh, yeah, there is still silicon out there to be collected. So at least we're bringing some of that stuff in and we are focusing on that just as we're focusing on carbon. We have enough polymers to help the Protagoras. We have enough alloys to help the Protagoras as well. The only thing we're waiting on then is uh, not population management, but uh, bringing these 320 cryonic pods back. We are on 
very thin ice as far as ice is concerned. There's only 13. At the time, there was only 8 ice on the station, so I think we'll keep the whale chasing after ice, though I am tempted to get it chasing after cryonic pods as well. Now, water, you know what, actually? Water's looking pretty okay. Water is looking pretty okay. Fine, here's what we'll do. Pop management. Why? Not pop management. I think of cryonic pods, I think about population. I don't think about fleet. Go ahead and bring the cryonic pods in, and we'll just keep an eye on our water, water levels, and if they start to get a little uh, concerning, we'll, uh, we'll switch this around again. But again, the, the, the fact that we have so many chronic pods out there is currently what's stopping us from actually going into the ice fields. Like I said previously, I want to secure these, uh, these chronic pods before we go in there. Though granted, I say that, we should consider the fact that these chronic pods are all coming from the Protagoras. So being close to the Protagoras would allow that collection to happen a little bit faster, right? Absolutely. However, our stockpile currently is pretty much topped up and the uh, docking bay is close to being topped up as well. So having a bit of a, a delivery time, if you will, delivery delay, is actually working in our favor over here. I just wanted to address that because, uh, yes, that occurs to me as well, that being close to the Protagoras would make it faster as far as collecting those chronic pods are concerned until, of course, we have too many chronic pods and then we're, we're sitting just in the ice field doing nothing. Sector 3 has had an accident. Are you okay? Yeah, you're fine. Making me panic for no good reason. Doing all right. Doing pretty good, actually. Doing pretty good. Iron's kind of low. That's not true. You're just waiting for iron to, to, to get here. Oh, iron is actually kind of low here. What is going on with our resource management? Let's make sure that Sector 3 is dealing with iron and it's keeping zero, whereas Sector 2 is staying maxed. All right, cool. Good stuff. That will solve our problem. I glad I noticed that. I'm glad I checked that. That would have been a pain to uh, to learn about down the line, but there's plenty of iron to be picked up. And again, Sector 3 is prioritizing uh, iron, right? Because the Aldana and Pelican are the ones bringing in iron. The Zoti is uh, sort of a second uh, second priority for it. So, uh, or, or sorry, Sector 2 is sort of a second uh, secondary priority after Carbon and Silicon, really, um, who are both top priority, I would say. All right, cool. I'm not saying priority as far as game mechanics are concerned. That's not how they've been set. I just mean in terms of uh, what we're doing with the cargo ships there in general. I do also wonder about, yes, getting that uh, additional cargo ship over here, bringing more iron in that much faster. Um, we have the surplus polymers. We have surplus uh, carbon as well to make additional polymers too. It doesn't hurt to have another cargo ship. My curiosity is that would I rather save this space for a science ship when we arrive at our next destination? That's kind of my hesitation, I guess. Uh, and we're doing fine for the time being. There isn't even that much left to mine, so I think we'll keep it as is and uh, and leave that gap for the time being, yeah. Again, we can always decommission a ship, but why why waste uh, resources and stuff? Why, 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 why do that, I guess, is the question. Where everything else is uh, going so smoothly, including our acquisition of resources now. But taking a look at fleet management, about 220 or so, well, less now, about 190 or so uh, chronic pods left needing pickup. And if we take a look at population management, I almost wonder if we're not able to ship a bunch more workers into Sector 2 and Sector 3 and actually give them those lenient working hours, you know? So how many non-workers do we have over here? 400, my goodness. 400 non-workers. Sector 3 has room for about 120 more uh, people. So why don't we get, not 120, but maybe 100 non-workers from Sector 1 to Sector 3? Yes. And why don't we go ahead and get uh, colonists. How many colonists do we have over here? 27? Uh, so 27 colonists from Sector 1 to Sector 3 as well. Start that migration. And why don't we go ahead and, uh, yes, train some more colonists here as well. Uh, I really got to stay on top of that. My big concern was the availability of uh, electronics, but we're doing okay on that front too now. So, uh, so I should be able to stay on top of that as uh, we take a look at fleet management. And yes, there is still plenty of silicon out there to collect. Ice is not looking too good, but water is looking okay. We're at about 50%. Just got to make sure we don't run out of water. Running out of water is the death of this station. We are so reliant on it now to feed the entire station that as soon as that gets to about 33%, I think, we're going to have to uh, get both the uh, whale and uh, koala chasing after ice. But we can do that. Once we've taken care of the colonists, we can do that with, uh, with a little hesitation. And there is plenty of ice in these ice fields. Go figure, right? There is uh, about 388 at the Protagoras. There is a bunch more over here as well. I'd say approximately 300 or so over here as well. So there's plenty of ice in the area. Oh my goodness, more than 300. 400 plus 300, 700 ice. A and then here as well. Yeah. So we'll, we'll change the prioritization once we've rescued all those people from the, uh, 
from the Protagoras is like chronic pod bays and stuff, and uh, and we'll be we'll be fine sooner perhaps because we're getting precariously low as far as uh, water supply is concerned. So sooner probably, but uh, but uh, I'm not worried. I'm not worried. As over here, we'll go ahead and dismantle this and replace it with demotic quarters as well. We have electronics available in the area, and we have a alloy stockpile very nearby, which makes it happen so much faster. It also helps that we're playing at three speed right now, obviously, but uh, it's nice to see those numbers rack up or, or drop down so much more quickly as the intelligent lab has been unlocked. Excellent. So what is next over here as we produce five science every five cycles? We can now switch gears to the alternative life centers upgrade with the Dolos survivor families, plus one stability to a sector while it has more than 400 crew, as long as we have the alternative life center built. Next is perpetual motivation, giving us an additional plus one if we have more than 800 crew. Interesting. Not a lot of places are going to have that, but right now sector one and sector three both boast more than 400 people, and it's not that difficult to get sector two there either, and actually have waste collection, waste recycling, I should say, happening in both sector one and sector two. Yeah, you know what? Let's go ahead and research Dulles survivor families, and then we will absolutely switch gears back to our uh, tech lab and uh, improve uh, everything right up until computing optimization. Got to be nimble, right? Got to stay on our toes, got to adapt as needed. Uh, again, the other option, arguably, rather than getting uh, Dulles survivor families is to get the train station and the uh, exo fighting dome, but that's 90 science a piece, right? That'll take so much longer for us to actually research. So instead, by focusing on Dulles survivor families, uh, we're able to more quickly go back to researching our uh, upgrades to the tech lab. That's the logic in my head, at least, and hopefully it'll work out nicely as this uh, demotic quarters is almost done and homelessness will be survived once or will be fixed, I should say, once that happens, hopefully homelessness won't survive, but uh, the homeless will. And now we have a food situation, but do we actually? Oh, hey, cycle 730, happy new year indeed. So says uh, the game. Does that add up? I guess it does, damn. 365 times two. Damn, it's been a long time uh, in this system, hasn't it? We've been in this system longer than we were in the soul system, if uh, if memory serves me correctly. But let's uh, let's 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 not get distracted by that. Let's make sure we have enough food in sector three. Uh, head on over to resource management sector one. You are keeping minimum of ten. Okay, that's cool. So we know that exports are going to happen. Let's get forty here in sector three and sector two. You're doing fine, right? Yeah, they're doing a okay. Uh, they could use some extra food as well, actually, truth be told. Why don't we do that? Why don't we go ahead and uh, get Sector 2 chasing 40 food as well? And that way we know we'll be able to sustain 400 people across all three of these sectors for that uh, tech upgrade that's happening and for population movement that we might want to do shortly thereafter, right? And uh, let's take a look at fleet management. 68 cryonic pause left, so that shouldn't take that much longer. And then we'll be able to, yeah, move into the, uh, the ice fields and, and get our work done there as well. Cool. Good stuff, very good stuff. We should definitely get ice brought in now. Uh, let's get the whale here focusing on ice and koala focusing on colonists, or chronic pods, I should say. And uh, I think that'll be a comfortable balance because water's getting kind of tight. <laughs> Again, I might have waited just a little bit too long. But hey, what's life without risks, as I like to say? What is life without risks? Down over here, why don't we go ahead and build some additional batteries because we are now looking at uh, 2.5 cycles worth of batteries left. Uh, because we've built a, a bit more here, right? So I think it's a, a good idea to, uh, to to adjust for that. Though we can always shut the colonization training center off, for example, to to to, to save up on uh, on on battery consumption. Nonetheless, we have these surplus alloys, and it'll probably be helpful in the long run. So let's get uh, another two batteries built, and we won't be able to build one back there. Actually, hmm. it's actually a messy layout now that I. Now that I look at it properly, hopefully we won't need more back there. Maybe we can get like a mess hall or something fit down there. We'll, we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. Another demotic quarters just randomly. Or, hang on a second. What about our uh, cell housing? Ooh, the cell housing will fit there. Cell housing next to a bunch of battery cells. How about that for a uh, strange sort of poetry? Um, okay, that's an option if we wanted to explore it. Because that houses, what, 125 people, right? We'll see if things get that desperate, and I wouldn't be surprised if they do. But uh, for the time being, we'll just register that we have that room there, and we can take advantage of it uh, eventually. Now, can we actually fit a stockpile down over here? We can. 
if I wanted to get a waste stockpile like over here and then have a road at the back heading over to our mushroom wall over there or something, that might not be too bad. Because the mushroom wall, I believe, is just a little bit too big, if memory serves me correctly. Mushroom wall. Oh, no. We'd be able to put a stockpile right in front of this, the mushroom wall as well. Okay, cool. Cool, cool, cool. Bussing over nothing because we're actually on top of things. We're, we're doing very well, truth be told. We're doing fantastically. 1,400 people on this station right now. My goodness. Still 68 uh, chronic pods to be picked up. Ice is still looking kind of tight. What is the situation out over here? Got uh, Pandora. We got uh, Whale bringing some ice back. Okay, good stuff. Where is my... Uh, where is my lovely... Lovely koala. Okay, it's heading out there right now to pick up some of those chronic pods. It can only pick up about 30 per... Uh, Per, 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 per shipment, right? So it'll be some time before we have uh, those chronic pods picked up. But at this point in time, maybe we could move into those ice fields. Being a little cautious, maybe. But uh, look, all I needed to see to make me uh, cautious was the uh, self-cleaning systems over here, right? If there's a chance of these solar panels getting destroyed, that means there's a chance of us needing to invest that much more into uh, their upkeep, and there's a chance of us facing a blackout, which makes people upset. We're very upset. We only have about uh, two. I mean, here we have five cycles worth of, of power now, but on average, we have about two cycles worth of, uh, of batteries, which is uh, not good enough. Not good enough if things go sideways. Why don't we go ahead and build some more batteries over here, actually? We've got, uh, we got alloys. We've got surplus alloys. They're just sitting there doing nothing, looking pretty. And uh, here, in our industrial sector, in sector 2, we can switch things off if need be, right? We can, like, even right now, we can turn the polymer refinery off because we're capped off. We can turn the electronics factory off. No, I'm not going to because we, we need quite a few more electronics. But we can turn things off to uh, preserve the battery situation in sector 2. It's uh, sector 1 uh, that I'm kind of concerned about, really, as far as... Uh, not being able to turn off things like water production or food production, obviously, as ice has arrived and has been shipped over to the fusion station and is now being turned into water. 15 ice becomes 40 water every cycle, as long as we have 15 ice, which we currently do not. Fleet management. Hmm, okay. Okay. Might be time to start getting a little nervous. Over to our system map. The whale is where? Where are you at, buddy? I wish, uh... Wish I could more easily tell where everybody is. The whale is going down over here right now. I assume that's closer then. How much more is left over here? 65 left to collect? It makes sense, right? Empty these guys out before we head into the ice field and then have all these resources more readily available once we're actually in there. I'm sure we'll be fine. I'm sure we'll be a-okay. You know what? I don't think we're going to be okay. I think we're in a bit of trouble. I think I've made a horrible mistake. Um, and I think I'm going to... Uh, pay a mighty, mighty fee for that mistake. All right, we've got another ice shipment coming through. We've got enough ice to produce another 40 water, and then we'll have more ice to produce an additional 40 water on top of that. Okay. What if uh, we take a look at fleet management now? Eight more cryonic pods out there, eh? All right, here. Let's go ahead and prioritize ice, and uh, those cryonic pods can wait until our arrival at, uh, at the Protagoras. What we'll do is we'll wait until this gets emptied a little bit, we have a few more people woken up from their chronic slumber, and uh, and then we can move into the ice field and uh, not worry about spending too much time in there. Obviously, it'll take at least, what, three, four cycles to actually get them up and running? Three cycles? And then who knows what else actually waits for us there? But at least we've optimized the initial move, right? We've made sure that we're able to pull that off super quickly um, as, 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 as soon as we get there. And uh, there's no travel time when we're right next to the Protagoras, so our cargo ships should be able to go back and forth extremely fast from uh, Sector 2, where we have, what, uh, you know, 200 alloys. We have uh, 100 uh, polymers as well. Like, we'll be fine. Oh, no. Did we actually lose people? Three crew members were injured. Five crew members were injured. No, no, no. Okay. Normally, when you get the ellipses at the end of one of these warnings, it's because people died. But no, it's just because Colonization Training Center is that much longer of a... Uh, of a name. Okay, we're fine. We're fine. We're fine. We're fine. Sector 1 is suffering a little bit as far as food is concerned. Hopefully that's a short-term situation. As over here, I swear to God, if our fusion station breaks down, we're in a lot of trouble. We're already in a fair bit of trouble, actually. This is not... Uh, what have I done? Why was I so eager to uh, take this massive risk? We have 100 units of water left. We have 100 units of water left. Do we have enough 
of a runway here as far as food is concerned. I am not entirely sure, folks, but I'm not going to find out, and neither are you, until next time. This is where we're calling it a session, folks. I hope you enjoyed this one. Things started very smoothly. Uh, things remain relatively smooth in many ways, though a little rough in others, potentially. I'm, yeah, a little concerned. Just a touch. We'll be fine. Folks, if you had a good time, you know what to do. Let me know by leaving a like and a comment down below. As always, it makes a very big difference in just letting me know what people are enjoying on the channel. It lets me know what I should uh, keep doing, what I should speed up, slow down, so on and so forth. And uh, otherwise, it's uh, it for 2022's Ixion episode. That's so wild to say, folks. I'm looking forward to seeing y'all in the new year as far as this series is concerned. And uh, I would just like to thank you for your... Uh, viewership and your uh, comments your likes your sharing and everything and of course i would like to give a massive thanks to all of the channel members and patrons who've been supporting the channel on a monthly basis y'all keep us alive and running smoothly and of course again a big old thanks to each and every one of you for watching until next time cheers and happy new year <laughs>